Hi, I'm Max and I'm a developer with IBM MQ. In this video, I'm going to explain some key enterprise messaging patterns and some common use cases for each one. We're going to talk about putting and getting messages, point-to-point -point messaging, publish-subscribe event-driven messaging, request-response messaging, and message expiry. So let's get started. First, I want to talk about putting and getting messages. So the action of putting some information somewhere and then consuming it somehow is key to all of the messaging patterns that we're going to talk about. In IBM MQ, we put messages to objects called queues and topics. If you want to know more about messaging objects, we've got a video on that too. Point-to-point -point messaging is a really key messaging pattern. An application puts a message onto a queue, which is then taken off that queue by another application, which uses the message data to do some processing. You can set this to assure that the message will arrive exactly once. An example could be if you have an online store that gets a lot of traffic. Your stock database needs to be updated as people make orders, and if you don't prepare for this, the server could be busy and unable to process those orders. Putting messages onto a queue makes sure that all those database updates can take place, and the server isn't going to miss a message. Publish subscribe is an event-driven messaging pattern. That means that when an event happens, you send information about that event in a publication to something called a topic. And in published subscribe messaging, any interested application can subscribe to that particular topic to receive that information. For example, if you work for an airline, you'll get information when flights get delayed. You might also have a mobile app that notifies users when there's a change to their flight. And so you'd have the information about a particular flight come in, and you need to send that information to your passengers. With Publish Subscribe, the passenger's phone apps subscribe to flight updates. When an event happens, like learning a flight will be delayed, you send that information about a flight change to a topic, and the users who are booked onto that flight will get information about the update. Now you don't need to worry, from your end, how many users are going to get each flight update, all you do is send out that information. And the users don't have to get every update for every flight, just the ones that they're subscribed to. Request response messaging is built on top of point-to-point -to -point messaging. Basically, you send a point-to-point -point message to a consuming application, and you want a reply back. Often you might specify that that reply is sent back to a specially created temporary queue, so your app can send out that message and then monitor that queue for a response. For example, say that we've got a ticket reselling app that buys event tickets from a venue and then resells them to the public. When an event goes on sale, you might request to buy a number of tickets that you can resell. Now, it's really, really important that you have the event organizers confirm that you have secured that number of tickets that you've ordered before you can start to resell them. Now, you could say, hey, Max, why can't I just get this behavior with REST or with another API? That's a really good question, actually, because you can use an API like REST to get this behavior. But if you do, all of those applications have to be online and responsive at all times for this to work. Request response lets you have this behavior while it decouples your applications so they're not dependent on each other. Sometimes you only want a message to be used if it can be processed within a certain amount of time. If that time elapses, you want to prevent the receiving application from receiving the message. And this is really useful when you deal with information that needs to be current. If I want to agree to buy something so long as the sale is completed within a certain amount of time, I would make sure that I set a message expiry time for my message. Now we've seen these key patterns that we would use in a messaging solution. Fundamentally, messaging is super simple, but you can build up to really powerful patterns whilst your messaging solution takes care of the technical details and it makes sure that each and every message is processed in an event-driven or a point-to-point -point way, depending on your needs. Now don't forget, it's important to consider the right messaging pattern for your use case. So you might even need to use more than one type. That's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Leave us a like if this was helpful, if you learned something new, and let us know in the comments what that thing was or what you'd like to see in the future. If you want to get hands-on with messaging, have a look at our free MQ Developer Essentials badge. Other than that, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.